What's up, Snow Tracks Nation? Luke here, bringing you what could possibly be the last walk around video uh, of this winter, of the 2022 winter. So, uh, what I've got for you here is actually a early build 2023 Lynx X Terrain RE. And before I go any further, I just want to say if you guys like these videos, make sure you click that like button. Uh, if you enjoy our videos in general, make sure you subscribe and definitely comment what you think about what we're saying or about the vehicle we're talking about because we always read your comments. We try to reply as much as possible. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to the end of this video because uh, I've got some information for you on how you can win uh, a prize pack, a Snow Tracks Nation prize pack. So definitely stay tuned. Now that all that's said and done, let's talk about the Lynx X Terrain RE. So, what is this thing? Well, essentially, and after perusing the specs quite carefully, this is uh, a lot, it's a lot like a Rave sorry, a lot like a Rave um, with a longer track, but there are some, some, some other differences. So let's go over some stuff. First of all, this is called a 3700. The, uh, the Rave is a 3500, and the difference between the two is that the Rave is a 137, and this is a 146. Um, so that's in millimeters, as we've talked about before, and that's the track length. It is a 16 wide track. It is a two inch paddle. It is a powder max. So it's a pretty serious track. When you think about it, 146, two inch, 16 wide is gonna give you some serious flotation. And if it sounds kind of familiar, that's because it kind of is. This sort of tunnel setup is very similar to the Backcountry X from Skidoo. So the same length um, with a similar track. So that's something to consider. Um, what's a little bit different uh, in the front end than, a, than the Rave, same general front suspension, but if you read the specs, and I'm not really sure how they're achieving this, whether it's through spacers or whether it's actually, a, it can't just be the front suspension. Anyway, it's gotta be the spacers, but this one is listed as being 42 inches wide, whereas the Rave is listed as being 43 inches wide, and that's based on the millimeter to inch conversion. So um, I'm pretty sure that's all done just through the spacers on the skis. One comes with them more narrow, one comes with them wider, uh, so you can adjust either way. But what I really like about this setup is that it is the full width trail front end. So this sled is a great trail sled. It handles just like a trail sled should handle. And in my opinion, up to now, this is the closest competitor to uh, a switchback assault uh, in terms of being on-off capable. I've ridden this thing, I put some miles on it on the trail, it's fantastic, it handles great, it rides really well. It's fun and playful, just like the Rave in terms of like getting the skis light, even though it's a 146, it still wheelies like crazy. Um, but it corners, it goes around a corner, it turns great, um, just like the Rave does. So it's, it's a very interesting sled. It's something the market has needed for quite some time. A serious competitor. Now, we've talked about how the, the Arctic Cat um, Riot is a great competitor for the Switchback Assault, and it is, it still is for sure, but this is maybe even a better competitor. So let's move on to something else. Interesting thing about Lynx products. They really don't have any packages. There's not package levels. Um, this is what you get. If you buy an X-Train RE, here it is, there's no options per se. It comes equipped basically just like the Rave, which is, you know, RE is sort of their, I don't, I'm not gonna say race edition, it stands for something different, but it's, the, it's like a serious package, right? I mean, this one even comes with the KYB Pro 46 uh, HLCR shocks. So just as serious, they're Kashima coated, just like the Rave, this is a serious, bump sled. It's got the PPS3 rear skid that's simply extended uh, to 146. Um, this is a serious snowmobile that is designed just like the Rave to handle ridiculous bumps at super high speeds because as we talked about in Scandinavia that's how they ride. So um, why would their let's say crossover sled be set up any different? If it's going to ride the same trails as the Rave it should be set up to do the same thing and it is. So I think that's really cool to have a sled that's this long with a track that's this serious but still be able to pound huge bumps with it and I didn't get a chance to do that with this sled I will this coming winter of course in 2023 but for now uh, I'm just going to have to speculate that it goes through bumps really really well I do know that it pulls sweet wheelies and is super fun and handles really good I did test out those things um, what else can we talk about here well other differences from a Rave and I'm going to compare it to the Rave because as I said it's very similar um, with just a different track and skid setup but other differences, the one big visual difference you're gonna notice is that the Rave has a plastic wing, I'm gonna call it a wing, that goes from right here all down this side panel and bolts in right where this little close-off plate is. 
Why it's not here on the X-Train, I can only speculate that it's maybe because the X-Train is designed for backcountry exploring and where you might be into trees and branches and it could potentially get ripped off. That's my, that's what I suspect, the reason they've left it off of this vehicle. Um, it's hard really to notice uh, unless you're looking for it, but once you see the two side by side, that, that piece missing, you really do notice it. And personally, I like the panel with the piece. Uh, if it's something that could be added to this, I would probably personally do that once I've spent the money on this kind of a sled. I'd just spend the extra money to buy that part and new graphics and put it on because I think it looks great. Um, other little things, this comes with a windshield. Uh, so this is the proper mid-height windshield that this sled comes with as well as the hand guards. It's very warm. Um, this is the windshield we put on our Rave because riding it with that little, well, basically just this piece was unbearable in cold weather. Um, this sled also, the X-Train also comes with, and I want to get this name right. I wrote some of this stuff down because it's hard to remember. Okay, it's called the Explorer front and rear bumpers. And if you look at this rear bumper, this might actually be the most serious rear bumper I've ever seen on a snowmobile that's not meant for utility. It's, it starts here with all of this bracing up in here and then the actual handle is bolted into the two side plates that is a serious bumper i will say this however it's not very comfortable <laughs> so while it's super durable it does even have mounts for uh, a trailer hitch um, and it looks cool it's not the most comfortable uh, bumper to grab it also interestingly has more tie down hooks here and here so you've got your link attachments which are standard on all uh, link sleds as well as all skidoos now come with the link attachments pre-installed before you pick the sled up but it also has a few extra tie downs on both sides so that's kind of neat if you want to carry extra stuff that's not link compatible you can do that on this sled. Um, PPS skid frame is basically the same setup just as I said with a longer rail so there's no surprises there. One small difference between this and a Rave, Rave, I'll get it right some point, is this doesn't have the little toe hooks that hold your toe in like the Rave does. It does, however, have the, uh, I don't know what you call it, but the little platforms in here that level out the running boards and make them flat. Uh, and anyone I know who's ridden our Rave this past winter has, has raved <laughs> about those, those little pieces. They love it. When you get off of a Skidoo and onto a Lynx, those make a huge difference. They're available for both brands, so you can add them, but I think that's just a fantastic part. Whether or not having this raised up so that it actually sits slightly above your running board without the toe hook, whether that's going to cause your foot to slip off or not, I don't know. I know why they do it though. They do it because when you're on the sled, this is again a crossover, it's a 146. It's so you can put your foot here to side hill and not obviously have that little bracket in the way. So that's why they do it. I'm not sure how I'd feel about that if I was going to mostly trail ride. I'd probably buy those parts and put them on. Um, but that's a small point. This one is an 850 E-Tech. So I know you guys constantly are telling us we want to hear the sled, hear the sled, hear the sled. Um, and we have been doing a good job of giving you guys that. This is an 850 E-Tech. This is the same 850 E-Tech that's on every 850 E-Tech Skidoo and the Rave from last season. But here, it sounds the same. Listen to that. It's an 850 E-Tech and it sounds like an 850 E-Tech, which is awesome. You can get this sled with the uh, 900 Ace Turbo R. Uh, I think that's an interesting package. Um, that would be, in my opinion, much more for a guy who's going to trail ride this than a guy who's going to go off trail. Um, you don't need anything but an 850 E-Tech if you're going to be boondocking or running out off trail or, or doing on and off trail a lot. If you're going off trail, take the lightweight 850. You won't regret it. If you are going to be uh, on trail more often, you're a high mileage rider, the turbo is a great choice. But uh, for me personally, this would be the package I'd, I would purchase. Um, this sled has the same skis as the Rave. Um, what are they called again? I'm sorry that I can't remember all this stuff, but there's a lot of names floating around. These are called the Blade XC Plus skis. So they are the same as what's on the Rave. These skis are phenomenal. These are, I can't say enough good about these skis. I absolutely love them. Um, they work, they steer, they have excellent flotation. They look really cool. They're super durable. There's really nothing that I can say bad about these skis. Um, same seat setup. You know, you got your Radian platform is what they call the chassis uh, with its exposed twin spar uh, setup. You've got this, the same seat as what's on the Rave. So if you've sit, sat on a Rave, you know 
it feels very much the same. There's a slightly taller riser, uh, which makes sense for a sled that's gonna be a crossover, and it does come with this mountain loop, uh, it, which is interesting. I, I don't usually use these, um, even when I'm just out playing off trail, uh, but it's there, and it's something you could take off if you wanted to, but um, some people love them, so the fact that they include it is really nice. Uh, again, this sled comes with just the standard gauge package. It doesn't have the big fancy upgraded gauges. If it was a choice between this and Skidoo's old gauge, the seven inch gauge, I would take this hands down all day long. So that's a good thing. The new 10 inch gauge is from BRP. That's a pretty impressive gauge. I like that gauge a lot. Um, in terms of readability, it's, it's amazing. So that would have been a nice upgrade. But if you go with that gauge, you do lose some of your storage and this has the standard um, storage that all um, Lynx sleds have. So something to think about. Um, this sled also is your typical, um, I guess you'd call it body panel setup, where these side panels come off really easy, but to get the top part off, if you need to get in there to work on the motor or anything like that, it is quite a chore. There's a lot of pieces and a lot of bolts. So, um, you know, that's something that Skidoo has improved on the G5, but Lynx has not yet changed how this works and that would be nice to see that happen um not a lot really else to say about this sled uh I, as i said i rode it on trail and uh, i really liked it it was an impressive trail sled it was something that i was not expecting to like as much as i did um, i didn't get a chance to take it off trail but i have strong assumptions and i think i probably will be right that it's going to make a great off-trail crossover sled um, this is going to be the one where if I was going to buy uh, an off-trail crossover that wasn't an assault, it would be this one for sure. A um, couple other little things as I'm standing here just walking around talking. Uh, this comes with a heated visor port, which is interesting. I don't know who rides a crossover sled with a heated visor, but if you do, there it is. Uh, comes with a tether, as all skidoos do, which is also your key, which all BRP products have now as their, is their key, which is nice. Um, and it's very interesting that this key actually says skidoo on it. So that's kind of funny. Uh, switch gear is all the same. You've got RER, it's all the same stuff. Uh, these are really good hand guards. Um, I spent a lot of miles on our Rave and these hand guards work good. They're warm, they're durable. Uh, they're still a little flexible so they won't break off, but they're really good hand guards. Um, the other thing this sled has, and this is probably a big one to a lot of people. So it must be, I, I, I can't forget it. I got to mention it. This sled has a pull start. Um, that's something that a lot of people complain about with uh, Skidoo's, you know, Lynx's sister company Skidoo doesn't come with pull starts on a lot of their sleds. This one has it and it's accessible from the outside, you don't have to open the panel to get to it, which a lot of people who see this sled comment on that and really, really like it. So I personally really like it as well. If your battery dies uh, on some of these sleds with no pull start, you're in trouble, you're screwed. If you don't find somebody who's got jumper cables or a booster pack, you're not going anywhere. Um, you can spin the, the primary to start it, but I never feel very good about that. So um, that's your really your only option is to get your hands in there with a rope. And I like my fingers. So anyway, small point. Um, other than that, I will say that um, Lynx does a great job with their wheels. It's a small thing, but I've never understood why snowmobile companies can't do a cooler job with wheels. Like we all put trick wheels on our trucks. Uh, I think they can do better and Lynx has definitely upgraded the wheel game quite a bit and they look awesome. Um, so that's a, a very, very small point, but something I notice when I look at this sled uh, and I really like it. So that's pretty much it. That's my walk around of the X-Train RE from Lynx for 2023. Uh, we're gonna put big miles on this sled this winter. We're gonna get some serious opinions and give you guys a lot more info on it. So stay tuned to that, unfortunately, Winter has come to an end here, um, so I can't do any of that fun stuff right now. But next year, as soon as the snow falls, I'm already itching for it. I'm already waiting for it, just like I'm sure a lot of you guys are. Um, winter's my favorite season. I'm sad to see it go. So uh, I'm, I'm already just excited for next year and excited to put some miles on this baby and, and really ring it out on and off trail and uh, give you guys all that information. So when I started this walk around, I promised that if you stuck around to the end, I'd give you some information on um, how to win a cool uh, Super Tracks Nation, Snow Tracks Nation um, swag pack, and here's how you do it. I want you to comment and tell me, tell us, tell all of us here, whether you like the more narrow front end that's on the Backcountry X, uh, or whether you like this wider front end that's on the Lynx X-Terrain RE. Um, 
I want to know what you guys think about that. Obviously, there's some trade-offs both ways, and I'm very curious to hear what you guys think is the better setup. So comment. We'll pick one comment at random, and that person will win a, a little bit of a swag pack from uh, Snow Tracks Nation. So thanks for sticking around to the end. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave your comments. Um, you know, Click that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys on the next one.